falling rate drying happens when the drying rate decreases or falls continuously with time, given that drying conditions are maintained constant, usually, falling rate drying is very important in production of dried agricultural products, such application is important to inhibit any possible microorganism activity in agricultural food by ensuring that food moisture content has been lowered below certain limits. There are two types of drying rate curve typically used for analysis. The first curve here shows moisture content, X, plotted against time. However, to determine the drying rate occurring at each stage of moisture content, we shall be using drying rate versus moisture content plot instead. There are two types of falling rate drying curve. The falling rate shown here passes through the origin, while this graph shows that the falling rate passes through the Y axis. After the critical moisture content, XC has been exceeded, falling rate drying begins. At first stage, particle surface are partially wet because not enough moisture can be transported from within the material to keep the entire surface moist. Then second stage starts. Now, moisture content present at the subsurface of the particle begin to be evaporated instead, until equilibrium moisture content is achieved. Internal diffusion of moisture dominantly controls the drying rate now, instead of external mass transfer during constant drying period, depending on the type of material dried, sometimes both stages of falling rate occur gradually and cannot be differentiated easily as shown in this plot here, although the total moisture content removed during falling rate period is less than that in constant drying rate period. The time taken for falling rate drying to be completed is much longer. The time, T, for drying between X1 and X2 in falling rate period can be calculated using the similar formula for constant rate drying, as shown here. Ls, refers to mass of dry solid, A, is the exposed drying area, R is the drying rate, while X refers to free moisture content. Calculations are slightly different for falling rate drying. There are two such cases. First, when the falling drying rate, R, is a linear function of X, given that R equals A, X, plus B, in which R represents the gradient, while B represents the Y-intercept. Drying time required can be calculated using this formula. Next is to consider falling drying rate, R as a linear function passing through origin of the curve, R equals A, X, where the gradient, A, equals to RC over XC. So, drying time, T, can be found using this formula instead.